Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's session. Trust that each one of you all had a great weekend. So even before we could begin the session, request one of you all to start the session with a word of prayer, please. Jeffina, would you like to pray? Yes, ma'am. Yes, thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the beautiful class that you're about to have by your grace. God, we invite the Holy Spirit to lead us. We ask you to fill us with your knowledge, with your strength, and with your wisdom as we learn a lot of things. Let us put that in our life. Let us apply it on our life and be there and be a blessing to the nation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Jafina. It was a wonderful prayer. Well, what is expected from this class is, I request all the students to keep your Bible ready so that we can take turns to read the scripture as we quote, because we're going to study on the word. And second is, I need active you know, respond. I, I request you all to please unmute and, you know, ask questions or answer when if asked any question. It would be, a, you know, good interactive session. Okay, so uh, before we could start with our session, I just want to post, uh, which I received, which I came across yesterday, a small comic on the four Gospels. I'll just share, just for laugh, as others Logan. Here we see a teacher. Can anyone just read that? Matthew, Mark, and Luke, see me after the class. Why? Your book reports are surprisingly similar. Just, I thought I'll just share this comic with you all. <clears throat> okay. So as, okay, as the students are joining in, I hope everyone have received the notes and I request each one of you all to please go through your notes, go through your notes so that when we study through the notes, I would, you all can share about, you know, who's the author, the writing, the purpose, the keywords, the outline. I request you all to give those information and then we can go through the chapters, the main incident, what this book talk about, the background of the book, of each book. So, so before I could start, so the Gospel of Matthew was written by Matthew himself. And it is one of the earliest official accounts about Jesus of Nazareth, which talks about his life, death, and his resurrection. And we also see the history tells us that, uh, tells us uh, for about 30 to 40 years, the apostles orally thought and passed on the eyewitness account about Jesus, about the teaching that he taught when he was there. And most of all was shared like the memory, whatever they memorized, you know, they started sharing with each other. And we also see that Matthew has uh, collected all this information and arranged them accordingly. And he designed this book. And in this class, we will specifically discuss about the Gospel of Matthew to show that Jesus is uh, the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy. And the uh, bi uh, biblical story talks about God in the Israel. And the three things we focus on, that Jesus is the Messiah who came from the line of David and that he is a new authoritative teacher like Moses. That's what the Gospel of Matthew portrays Jesus as, that he is the new Moses. And not only that, the third point we see in the book of in the Gospel of Matthew is that God with us, the Hebrew name is Emmanuel, which makes us believe and claim even today that God is with us. So Matthew designed this book with an introduction and we see a, a, a very beautiful introduction he gives with start with a genealogy and then he also concludes and this acts like a very good framework that concludes the teaching of Jesus and now uh, we see uh, different sections 
in the Gospel of Matthew, we see how uh, uh, the whole chapter from Matthew chapter 1 till Matthew chapter 28. Okay, uh, there are about seven sections that talks about certain topics that covers certain topics. Well, Matthew chapter 1 to 3. Please make a note in your Bible. Okay, Matthew chapter 1 to 3 talks about the introduction to Jesus. So they set a stage by attaching Jesus' story right from the storyline of the Old Testament scriptures. With that, we can move on to the next set, that is next section, that is from chapter 4 till chapter 7, where Matthew announces, he announces about the God's kingdom, the kingdom of God. And then the next section, the third section from chapter 8 to chapter 10. We see Jesus brings kingdom into people's life where he starts sharing the message of the kingdom of God. And also we see people accepting that message, receiving it with all they are. Now, who are these people? When we study the book of Matthew, we see that wherever Jesus passed by, there was a huge crowd following him. There was a crowd following him. So wherever Jesus was, there was a crowd following. Now, why did this crowd follow Jesus? Open to class, can you all share why did there was a huge crowd following Jesus and what type of people were there? What were the different mindset of people who were following Jesus? Yes, I think people who wanted healing. Yes, people who wanted healing, miracles. Next. They want to hear Jesus teaching the good news. Yes, brother. Anyone else? Some for food. Okay. Interesting. Yes. Some to find out faults in him. Some to just watch his words to trap him down. Yes. Yes, like the Pharisees of those days. Yes. Anyone else? So, yes, there was a huge crowd following Jesus. There were different type of people. Uh, some were just the spectators. They just want to watch what Jesus is doing. They didn't receive anything, but they just watched. Some some followed Jesus to judge him. Some for some followed Jesus to find fault in him, to accuse him, uh, uh, to kill him, to find some reason so that they can put him to death. Some genuinely followed Jesus for the kingdom of God, for the message that he was sharing. Um, see, those are the people who received the healing. Now, who are these people who received healing, who followed, who received the teaching job? Uh, teaching of Jesus, who do you think? These were not the religious people. These were not the religious people. They were not from that background. So these were the people who genuinely, uh, you know, they were waiting for Messiah. The minute they heard from people, hey, he's the Messiah, he's the one that John the Baptist was sharing or uh, talking about, Immediately, these people followed Jesus. And wherever Jesus went, wherever Jesus went, there was huge people following him. Uh, you know, uh, there was no social media those days to share the message and pass on the message about the meeting scheduled here and there. But then they did their best to pass on the message. But then uh, more or more often, the message passed by the word of mouth. And we see how people 
traveled with their children, with everything that they had, just to listen to his word. And that's the reason we see that Jesus, uh, you know, Matthew 14, 14 says that Jesus moved with compassion. And whenever he moved with compassion over people, we see signs, wonders, miracles happen. Genuinely. People just followed. There were many, they know they will not get food. They know that they have to sacrifice a lot, but still they followed Jesus. And these are the ones who actually had an encounter with Jesus. They received Jesus as the Messiah. Well, uh, as we cover that in Matthew uh, uh, 8 to 10, chapter 8 to 10, chapter 11 to 13, we see the different responses to Jesus from the people and from the religious leaders around, as we, as we talked about, some were genuine and some were to find fault, to trap him and to kill him. Well, uh, with this, we will move on to the next section, that is uh, Matthew chapter 14 to 20 which talks about the different expectation about the messiah from people they had a different expectation they expected him to be born as a king and need to be rich in royal power or the one who's come to abolish the roman kingdom you know they had different expectations but then jesus says i've not come here to set uh, to set you all free from the romans but then i have come here to give you, to announce the kingdom of God, set you free from the bondage of sin and slavery. With that, we will move on to the next section, that is uh, section 6, chapter 21 to 25, which talks about the clash of kingdoms. There are two different kingdoms, kingdom of light and kingdom of darkness. And Jesus comes to Jerusalem. And we also see uh, Jesus coming to Jerusalem for the Passover, riding on a donkey. And how... His action speaks louder than words. How? The way he, um, he cleared the um, cleared the tables in the uh, in the market uh, where the people had set up a marketplace in the in the temple and uh, Jesus was um, he, he was filled with so much of anger because they have made the house of God as the place of tent. So he just uh, moved the tables. Uh, he just took a whip and whipped certain people because this is the place of worship and not a marketplace. And why did Jesus do like that? Was it right? What was the, uh, why did, uh, why did uh, Jesus action was like this? Is it okay to be angry to whip people? What do you think? I think he was right because basically they were more focused on the business than on the religion, selling in the in the in the in the in the, in the place of worship. So they were more focused on the business than the religion. And he wanted them to focus on the religion. Thank you, brother. Anyone else? Brother Subhashish, Brother Lubega, anyone from the class? Nikki? Why did Jesus react so bad? Anyone? That's okay. Please feel free to share. Jeffina, anyone from the class? Zeli, Toli? I think it is also to um, fulfill one of the prophecies, uh, which I don't remember the reference exactly. Seal for your house will consume me. Uh, I, think, I think it's in Sam, but I don't remember the reference exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? I think it's in Psalm 69.9. Zeal for your house will consume me and the mockeries of those who insult you fall on me. Okay. Anyone else? Thanks, John. 
Anyone else would like to add to it? Simple, because Jesus, you know, uh, simply to make it as a house of God, once again, it was a place of worship, not a place to, you know, where they were focused to make money. And that to these money exchangers were not, um, were not dealing with people rightly. Uh, because people used to travel from very far off places to come to the temple of Jerusalem and make sacrifice. And actually, these money lenders were looting money from people. And they used to sell the animals or the offering, uh, you know, because they used to not carry it from very far off. They used to buy the sheep, uh, um, uh, the sheep and all the sacrificial, like, the turtle doves and or any kind of animal for the sacrifice and they used to sell at a very high price maybe uh, two times or three times higher than what it used to be and they were heart was only for the money and not for the people or not for god so Jesus cleansed the temple as it meant to be the house of God and not a house of men or for the merchants or for money. So yeah, and if Jesus had to tell in a very peaceful manner and these people were not in a position to hear to him because their, heart, their hearts were hardened. So he had to literally take a whip, throw the tables down and chase them out of the temple because he had the authority he had that authority and he did that and people listened and this is what happened and it was good to have an holy anger to do something to set th some things right in place well matthew 26 to 28 we see the conclusion where jesus celebrating the passover meal with his disciples and here we see in that last chapter 28 verse 19 we see the great commission that jesus giving to his disciples and there are a few questions that i would like to check and ask and share with you all so what do we know about the author of this book matthew these are the certain questions that we would be asking in, as we study each and every book. So I request you all to please go through the background. Please know certain details about the author of each book so that we can share and learn together in the class and keep it more interactive. So what do we know about the author of the book of Matthew? What does the Gospel um, of Matthew says? Yes, please, Rosalind, go ahead. He was a tax collector. Yes, good. Thank you. He was a tax collector. Anyone else? Um, hated by the Jews. Yes, because he was a tax collector. He was also hated by the Jews. True. Anyone else? Brother Isaac, Brother Lubega, Brother Subhashish, anyone else? Jeffina? Well, he, he was, as a tax collector, he was working on, on behalf of the Roman government as an agent. Yes, yes, yes. Right, thank you. So he is known uh, in Matthew chapter 9, verse 9. Can I request one of us to please turn to Matthew chapter 9, verse 9, please? Matthew 9, 9. Yes. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at, sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Matthew got up and followed him. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice. And we also, can, can I request one of you all to read Luke chapter 5, verse 27 to 32.
or just the verse 27 after luke 5 27 things, luke 5 27 after these things he went out and saw a tax collector named levi sitting at the tax office and he said to him follow me thank you thank you rosle so what do we see from these two scriptures we see that matthew was known by two names Certain people called him as Matthew and certain people called him as Levi because he was from that tribe. And the second point we see that in Mark 2, chapter 14, Mark chapter 2, verse 14. Can I also request another person to turn to? Okay, uh, I think we already read Ma Matthew 9, 9 and Luke 5, 27. If anyone has taken out turn to Matthew Mark chapter 2 verse 14, please go ahead. As he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, Follow me. So he arose and followed him. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Rosla. So what we see here is that Matthew had two names. One was Matthew and the other was Levi. And he was a Jew and son of Alphaeus. And we also see the third point here that he was a tax collector by occupation. So when we say tax collector by occupation, what is the background? So as a tax collector, he worked for the Roman government, which was hated by the Jews. Being a Jew, but he served for Romans. That means... You are against your own people, collecting the tax from your own community. <clears throat> so, usually the Jews hated the tax collectors. And Levi, being a Jew, he was hated by his own community people. Um, have anyone watched the, uh, the show of Chosen? You all can just raise your hand. Good. We have one person to Roslyn. Okay, I would request you all to just go. There are about two seasons. Each season has about eight episodes. Request you all to please watch so that when we study on the gospel about the disciples, we'll have a background picture where we can relate to it. One more thing we need to remember, these are creative. Okay, so they would have added certain things that may not be in the Bible, but to form a storyline. But not all that has been shown may be in the scripture. But then, yes, they have tried to focus on the scripture to narrate the story and and uh, uh, and bring a greater understanding for us in this uh, in this um, for our generation. So request everyone to please uh, watch Chosen. It is nice. Yes, I'm not promoting, but then it's good for us to watch where we will be blessed with that so it is an app we need to download and watch so as i teach even i'm relating to the story where how the jewish people hated <clears throat> hated matthew sorry i'm just clearing my throat hated matthew for being the tax collector he was also uh, 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 you know um, uh, he, he could not be a common man uh, who can uh, live among them he need to be guarded by the Roman soldiers because people hated him. They used to stone him. Uh, you know, they ill-treated this person. But then, as a tax collector, he was illiterate. He was well-educated. He was bilingual and, uh, <clears throat> and a Roman sympathizer. And third point we see about the tax collectors are, they were the ones who had kept the detailed records. So what happened? Because of his work nature, it helped Matthew to, to note down all the details of Jesus. As he was following Jesus, he could note down all, most of the incidents that took place uh, during the time when he was with Jesus. So it helped Matthew to prepare this document on the Gospel of Matthew. Give me a minute, please. And as a tax collector, uh, they were usually very rich 
tax collectors were considered the traitors by the people and they were also despised. And, uh, you know, they were despised to a certain extent that they were not allowed to enter the temple. And the high priest would not even pray for them. They were hated by people. So the tax collectors or the publicans were considered lower than thieves and prostitutes on the Jewish social register. So with this background, we will move on to the next point. As a tax collector, he was known to have been uh, 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 there were many tax collectors, uh, so they were known to be killed by the zealots. There were a certain set of people who were revolting against these uh, tax or the Roman government. So many of the tax collectors were killed by these uh, uh, by these zealots. And we also should remember that one of Jesus' disciples uh, was Simon the zealot, also was there. So uh, was one among the disciples of. Jesus. So Matthew uh, uh, seemed to have an obsession with money. I can't say obsession with money. Yes, he was good in handling the money. And it is interesting that he, he makes two accounts that uh, that is only present in the gospel of Matthew. That is Jesus uh, paying the temple tax from the coin of a fish's mouth which we read in Matthew 17. And we also see that it is, um, uh, uh, it is, it is interesting that we uh, also see one of the record that is bribing of the Roman guard to say that the disciples had stolen the body of Jesus. That is in the last chapter in Matthew 28, we see that he brings a note on that. So what we see here is he makes a keen attention towards the money or uh, towards how people spoke about money. So he records even the small, simple things that may have missed by the other apostles. But then Matthew pays attention because he would have been familiar with the corruption among the Roman soldiers those days. So he being there among them, serving and working among them. So he, know, he knew the mindset of people. So he brings this to our notice. And with that, we will move on to the next point. We see that he was also called by Jesus. When we read Mark chapter 2, 14, he was called by Jesus himself. That is when he was sitting in the receipt of the tax office, Jesus looks at him and says, Matthew, follow me. Now, why did Jesus do to Matthew when there were so many other people? That why did Jesus choose a tax collector? That was one of the questions raised by Pharisees. You sit and dine with the tax collectors. You have conversation with them. Then Matthew, uh, immediately, the minute Jesus called him, follow me, Matthew left his office immediately, without even a second thought, and he followed Jesus. And as he followed Jesus, we also see that, you know, uh, Jesus said, I'm going to come to your house and dine with you. And the minute that happened, Matthew, you know, uh, uh, he, he welcomes Jesus to his house and he also invites, invites the other tax collectors to have dinner and meet with Jesus. We see that has been recorded in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, verse 27 to 32. So, as we studied this about the tax collector, the background, what they are, and, and how Matthew was open to receive Jesus and follow him without uh, any question, and he also invited the other tax collectors to meet with Jesus. With that, we also should see, uh, when was this book of Matthew written? You'll have your notes. Can you tell me when was this book of Matthew written? It was between uh, 50 to 60 AD. Yes. 
thank you roslyn roslyn i also see your hand been raised sorry i didn't notice it before so that was for some uh, you asked who saw chosen so that was the okay okay sorry, great thank I, you I no, worries. no worries no worries is okay okay yes a note says about 50 to 60 ad yes while the date of writing uh, as you know even in the old testament as i kept telling the date of the writing may not be accurate perfect but then yes just for the record sake we can approximately consider this years 50 to 60 some of the records says 50 to 69 ad uh, that most scholars place the date for this book so uh, uh, we see that in matthew 27 verse 8 that use of phrase until this day that means suggest that he wrote something after certain events that have been already recorded or occurred so therefore uh, we see that in matthew chapter 27 verse 8 therefore the fields had been called the fields of blood to this day that means all these events had taken place all these events had taken place and with the money that whatever they received from judas they bought that place and it has been fee- called the field of blood to this day so certain incidents were already occurred and he wrote this book much later however we see uh, later in uh, in later chapters we see that it was likely written before the destruction of jerusalem in 70 ad because he refers to the city of jerusalem has the city of a great king the temple imp- the uh, uh, he writes about the temple the impending trouble and the holy city that means uh, this book was written before the destruction of jerusalem that is before the 70 ad now as we covered the date of writing can we look into whom was this book addressed to whom did the gospel of matthew was written for please go ahead brother lubega i think it was written for us all of us but particularly it was written for the jews yes yes thank you yes the gospel of matthew was written to the to the jewish people and it is also referred as the gospel to the jews it is believed that uh, this intended audience was the jewish people for the couple of reason there are few reasons why the scholars say that the gospel of matthew was written to the jews it is very clear that uh, the first point was it is very clear that he was writing to the people who were very familiar with the prophecies of the old testament so matthew makes over 60 reference to the old testament in his 28 chapters and the second point we see is that it is also clear that he was writing to a people who had an expectation of the coming of the messiah because daniel's uh, 70 weeks prophecy there was a great expectancy for the messiah to appear during this time frame so the jews were actually expecting for the messiah to manifest himself as a king and deliver the jewish people from the roman rule or from the roman bondage so the signs of the true messiah would be fulfillment of the promise and the prophecies in the old testament so as we spoke about this what was the purpose of this book can anyone say the purpose of this book then the purpose uh, could be to show the jews that uh, jesus uh, is the messiah that they were waiting for yes exactly thank you thank you roslyn yes the purpose of this book is just to show the jewish people that jesus is the messiah that you were waiting for 
And in a couple of ways, Matthew demonstrates this. First, he demonstrates that Jesus has the correct bloodline to qualify as the Messiah. That's why he goes back to the royal descendant and links the other covenant men in the old covenant from Abraham to David and then till Jesus. He brings it the 14th generation when we calculate 14 and 14, 14. So he proves conclusively that Jesus' life was a succession of one fulfilled prophecy after another. First, he, he proves the royal descendant. And, and second, he proves the prophecy has been fulfilled in Jesus. So he is the Messiah. So that's the reason that Matthew quotes about 60 promises of the Old Testament for, uh, quotes in the New Testament. And then the third we see, uh, before that, yeah, I see Lubega been raised at. Yes, brother. Yes, brother. I see your hand been raised, brother Lubega. You would like to share something? Okay, yes, there's no answer. Okay, there's some problem. Okay, well, we'll continue. So the second, po uh, third point we see here is, you see, uh, he, uh, Matthew intentionally shows that the coming of Messiah uh, is the coming to reign over uh, the spiritual kingdom and not the natural kingdom because People, the Jewish people were expecting the Messiah to come and deliver them from the hands of the Roman government. But here Matthew is showing that uh, Jesus is the Messiah and he is not here to deliver you from the natural kingdom. But then Jesus is here to deliver you from the kingdom of darkness. The spiritual kingdom. He's talking about the spiritual kingdom. And Matthew is the only gospel that uses the phrase kingdom of heaven and uh, and we, whereas uh, Luke uh, and Mark uses the phrase as kingdom of God. So Matthew uses the kingdom of heaven so that it shows that Jesus came here to set the kingdom of heaven among us. And there are many phrases we can see between when we compare the book of Matthew and the book of Mark and Luke, many places Matthew addressed the kingdom of God as kingdom of heaven, and whereas Mark and Luke addresses as the kingdom of God. So with that, we will move on to the next point. What are the things that mark this book as the book of the kings? Book of the kings. There are several elements in the gospel of Matthew that, you know, that shows that this is the book of kings. Well, the Old Testament prophets had declared that the Messiah would indeed come as a king, which was prophesied by Isaiah in chapter 9, saying, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son has been given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called the Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And there are other prophecies also where Matthew brings and highlight in his book about prophecy from Jeremiah, Zechariah. And also he shows that Jesus' kingly genealogy in Matthew chapter 1 and Matthew chapter 2, he shows that Jesus' kingly visit. And in Matthew chapter 2, 2, he shows that Jesus' kingly titled and, and in Matthew Chapter 2, verse 6, we see that Jesus' kingly function. And again, in Matthew 3, we see that Jesus' kingly forerunner and Jesus' kingly laws in Matthew 5, verse 22. You know, it goes on in many chapters how Matthew portrays that Jesus is the true king. He's from the royal descent. What is the other things that we can take a note from the book or from the gospel of Matthew? 
that Jesus demonstrating the authority of the kingdom of God from this book. So we see that Jesus has been seen in this book of Matthew as having all power and all authority. He portrays Jesus as the one who is the king who has the power and authority. And this power of the king has been demonstrated in several ways. So as a king of kingdom, Jesus is the supreme over everything. Over uh, uh, Matthew portrays like Jesus is the supreme over the people, over, uh, over the sickness and disease. We see how Jesus healed the paralysis or the sufferings. We see many miracles that Matthew has noted uh, in, in this gospel. We also see that Jesus has the power over the illness and over disease, where uh, he can also uh, bring the sight to the blind, heal the leprosy. And uh, he also has the power over the, over the weather condition. He stops the wind and the waves. He had the power over the atmosphere. He had power over the temple. He had power over the sin where he could forgive the paralytic man and he was healed immediately. Your sins are forgiven. Take your bed and walk, he says. He had power over the demons. Demons fled at the very presence of Jesus. We see Jesus has the power over the nature he had the power over the history and many other things. I request you all to study this book in detail so that we know how Jesus moved and thought during that time. And this account has been recorded. We need to make a note that this has been recorded by Matthew, who was the eyewitness. Jesus, he moved. He lived with Jesus. He saw he, he has seen every miracle with his own eyes and here he is writing. He is writing for you and me, for us to know the impact that Jesus created. Even after a thousand years, it is the same. These are the account that is written for you and me, for us to read, know, understand the true Messiah. And this God is living and he is living among us. So here we see that the book ends with a surprising twist. The last chapter says the disciples, they discover uh, after the death of Jesus, the tomb is empty. That means what? Jesus has been risen from the dead, just as what he's been saying. They didn't have an, an understanding before, but now they understand what Jesus was talking about. And here Jesus is alive and the book concludes that uh, the risen Jesus, uh, uh, risen Jesus, you know, showing, appearing to his people. And Jesus giving a great commission to people and Jesus say that he is now the true king of the world. And uh, so he sends his disciples out to all the nation, go to all the nation and share the good news that Jesus is Lord. That anyone can join this kingdom by being baptized and by following his teaching. And also this confirms the Hebrew name, the covenant name, that Emmanuel, God with us, that he is a God who will be with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. So from chapter 1, Matthew says that Jesus' last word in the book of his disciples are that I will be with you, Emmanuel. God with us. So it is a promise that Jesus' presence until this day that he finally returns, that he will be with us. Lastly, we need to pay attention to the types of people who accepted Jesus and followed him. And we will see that it's most often people uh, who, you know, who, for whom it was very easy to accept him, who actually received many miracles and signs and wonders that Jesus could do among them as the people who were hated by others, who were left out, the people who were very unimportant, who were not religious. These are the people to whom Jesus ministered to because Jesus very clearly says, uh, yes, uh, he says that only the sick needs a doctor. 
and for the other people the religious community for them uh, they could not accept jesus as the messiah for many reasons for the from the knowledge what they learned or they could not accept his teaching which was different but the people who were unimportant who were irreligious who were hated by others who were very poor they didn't have any money to uh, to put a food on their table well these people followed jesus very easily they could receive him as the messiah they could receive the good news that has been shared they could receive the news of the kingdom of heaven and these are the people who were transformed by their trust and faith in jesus and they followed him now when we look at the set of disciples of jesus each one were very different each one were very different they were different in their mindset different in their nature they were not a very holy people that jesus selected them no they were just common men men and women who were like us and jesus chose them and even when they walked with jesus it was not that they were perfect they failed in many areas but still jesus did not give up on them or jesus did not point out this is what you're doing or put them down but then he embraced them with love and care so this is what the gospel of matthew is i will leave open discussion to the class for 5 minutes you all can share something if there's anything you can add on with that we end the gospel of matthew and yeah if there's anything that you would like to share add on ask question please feel free to go ahead or is there something that you learned something new from this book or what are the points that we learned from this book if we can recap can i request each one to share one point just one point from what was unique or what you learned what caught your attention jeffina we'll go with you can you share what you learned from this session yeah i see brother subhashish saying that holy anger sometimes needed to bring a change yes yes brother jeffina lima lama sorry aradhana john paul nikki zelatoli please go ahead one point either you can chat or you can unmute and speak um my learning was like uh, jesus came to uh this role to not only uh, not only rule the physical world but more of a spiritual kingdom to establish the kingdom of god yes thank you thank you zeli yes that is very important that's what matthew is portraying to establish the kingdom of heaven and not the natural kingdom yes brother isaac you would like to add or what is the one point that you would like to share from the book of matthew overall matthew is portraying jesus as the king and uh, some people recognizing the king and some people rejecting the king uh, it it actually gives us an insight of how people used to see jesus in that age and that yes yes thank you john yes jesus is the king the messiah the jews were waiting for there was a good portrayal of how matthew portrayed in this gospel we also see brother subhashi share that we should never use ministry for our profit that is for money making but then it is to serve yes we see how jesus served he served people by giving to people he never took from people and made the people poor but then here jesus blessed them he blessed the poor 
with food and you know healing and deliverance yes he moved in compassion for the people and we see a lot of miracles been recorded in the gospel of matthew so with that we will end the session times up so can i request one of us to dismiss us with a word of prayer please Father, we pray that we would continue to dwell in your word. Yes, Lord. Uh, as we heard today, oh God, help us to walk more closely with you and keeping you as our priority, Lord Jesus. We pray that we would continue to have that awe in our hearts that when you came to this world and you've been revealed as the Father's heart, oh God. We pray that we would also continue to walk in that in in that reverence. of knowing who you are and what you have done for us lord we thank you for enabling pastor diana to share your word and we also submit all of us as a class to your presence and we pray oh god that we would walk more closely with you and understanding what you have in store for us god thank you lord in jesus precious name we pray amen amen thank you so much for joining in today's session see you all tomorrow god bless have a good day bye for now Thank you. Thank you. God bless.